And if we're going to welcome students back, which we think it's our duty to do if we possibly can, in the fall, we got to get started now. Uh, the huge changes to make. Yeah, no, in, in a way you're saying we have a plan to have a plan for that reopening. You know, my guess is a lot of college students will be eager to go to campus despite the risk that they'll still face. My question is what happens to their families and to the people that they come in contact with? In other words, would it be safer to say, yes, you can come back to campus, but you literally can't leave? I mean, would it, because they're, they might be safe with each other, but as we all know, they go back, they interact with their parents, with their neighbors, with parts of the population would be more vulnerable. How do we think about protecting those people from this uh, risk? Kelly, those were two very astute observations. First of all, yes, there is a very strong interest in coming back. We're hearing this from literally thousands of our students or potential students. Um, our uh, acceptance of Purdue's offers is ahead of last year's record rate. So we know there's an intense interest in coming and pursuing the, the, their education and their futures. Secondly, uh, one of the changes that I think is most likely among so many here is to our calendar with exactly the intention that you just mentioned to minimize breaks and, and minimize uh, the uh, numbers of times people come and go. Hmm. And so uh, I, uh, we haven't, again, made any final choices, but I think that one is a prime candidate. I mean, you could see a scenario perhaps in which the school year is much condensed. Um, you know, but even if there is a break, like a Christmas break, you're still talking about 45,000 students who are going to come to campus, mix with people from all over the country, then go back home and potentially spread coronavirus. So are you worried about uh, being held responsible for that? Now, I imagine Purdue's not going to be the only one, but already by announcing this plan, you're going to become a target. And if there are spreaders, is the university going to be liable? Well, we're worried about all these questions, of course. But... Um... Uh, at the same time, it wouldn't be in the personality of this university simply to throw up our hands uh, and uh, say we can't deal with it or, uh, or that uh, we'll wait and see uh, what others come up with. We're known here at Purdue for engineering and science, but we expect that all our graduates, it's always uh, been our goal that all our graduates are problem solvers, they are prepared to take on challenges and try to figure out a way forward. And that's what we're going to try to do in this instance. But the problems you're talking about are very real. The, the, the major changes I, I foresee us probably making here uh, really are those that will protect the vulnerable minority are, among our faculty, many of our staff, uh, from uh, the very real danger that this virus poses to them. Governor Daniels, where does testing fit uh, in your plan to, to uh, return to campus? That's number one. Number two, uh, what about classes? Are large classes likely to be put online as opposed to smaller classes? Will the large classes be spread out so that they're in different locations so you can have some social distancing? And third, what about gatherings outside of class? Because that determines so much of uh, what people love about campus life, going to events and, and uh, things like that. Absolutely great questions. Uh, very much under active discussion here. Yes, you can expect smaller numbers uh, in every context. I know we're looking for ways to reduce the, the size of classes. Obviously, the distance be uh, keeping distance between people. Probably going to see masks as a requirement, um, uh, at least for a long time here. Yes, we will probably have to forego some of the big events that have uh, that enliven life at a place like this lectures and guest speakers and and uh, and uh, convocations of that kind uh, in the good weather uh, uh, some of our faculty have suggested more outdoor classes because we believe it appears that the virus uh, transmits poorly or less well in those settings so all those things are uh, and and many more changes to our physical facilities for instance will be necessary for us to conclude that uh, we are safe and we are prepared. Uh, we won't move forward unless we believe that. But to get to that point, we have to get going now. And that's what the purpose of, of last week's letter and, and the meetings we're having every day now are, is about. You know, I have a question about revenue, which is, uh, you, you know, especially for you guys who have frozen tuition for so long, you have to be, a, I imagine, super attuned to. Um, you're a member of the Big Ten. It's unclear what's going to happen with football season. That's potentially a huge loss of revenue, even if your university is able to reopen. And even for students who are participating in sports on campus, do you think there's going to be contact activities? 
I'm very worried that there won't be. Uh, we were just talking about uh, uh, large crowds and how they just really don't work under these circumstances. Well, those are the biggest crowds that we have. And so uh, no one is, uh, I think at this point, can be confident that that uh, very uh, vibrant part of, of campus life uh, won't, uh, uh, will be uh, with us this fall. But um, I will distinguish this for you, Kelly. Uh, uh, Purdue's in very solid financial shape. We have uh, more than balanced our books every year. You're right, we've frozen tuition now for seven straight years. And, and, uh, but uh, that has not um, meant that we have uh, invaded our reserves in any way. In fact, they've grown. Our athletic department is self-reliant, self-financing, and they have a very, very serious problem, but it is separate from that of the university. Hmm. Governor, let me, let me come back to something you mentioned at the top and in your letter, uh, which is that, that as a lethality risk or a mortality risk, younger people are very low, it seems, uh, on that. But that doesn't mean two things. doesn't mean they can't get sick and very sick with this disease. How concerned are you about that? And I come back to the idea of, of where does testing fit in this? I know you're a data-driven person. Uh, you don't run the OMB unless you are and balance state budgets unless you are. If you start to see outbreaks, what are you going to do? Yes, I apologize for not dealing with your testing question, which is a very central one. We plan a very aggressive testing regime, possibly beginning uh, well before students arrive or on their and or on their arrival and regularly thereafter. Uh, we happen to have here a BSL-2 lab because we have one of the nation's finest veterinary hospitals, and uh, it is doing tests right now for the state of Indiana and will be available to do them for us. So we appreciate the central importance of testing, and we do plan uh, to use it aggressively. We've set aside um, a, a number of units and we'll, that will be uh, held for students who might become ill so that they can be properly quarantined and kept comfortable, continue, we hope, their studies uh, remotely while they recover. Mitch Daniels, president of Purdue University, former governor of Indiana, thank you very much for your time today. Always great to see you, sir.